Alex Stevenson and Jake Face here. Welcome to this week's Mortar Pod. We've got some uh, Born of the Gods release updates for you. Thankfully, Jake played it. I did not, so that would have been embarrassing if neither of us did. But this uh, this is actually going to be kind of cool because it looks like uh, Jake stepped out of his box a little bit with the deck. But before you get going, let me do some quick ah, plugs okay. off the top. Sorry. Uh, everybody go to seemsgoodmagic.com if you haven't already. That's where I'm going to be posting all of the Born of the Gods draft videos that I will soon be doing over the next couple weeks here when it's released online. And uh, you can also read articles by people I've known for a while now that have just written in and have all sorts of comments and stuff like that. So it's cool. It's like a community for all sorts of Magic the Gathering, standard, uh, modern, legacy. I play it all. I've got it all. <laughs> So go ahead, check that out, seemsgoodmagic.com, if you have not checked it out already. Um, another plug, Twitter, at seemsgoodmagic, follow us on there, and uh, I tweet when we put up new content and stuff like that, and when I'm live streaming, which I haven't done in over a month now, but once one of the gods comes back online, I will be live streaming again, so it's been just a really slow and sluggish last month kind of just waiting for the transition. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, okay, I won't interrupt you anymore, Jake. Go ahead and talk about your uh, Born of the Gods draft deck. All right. Well, I drafted pretty much a mono-red aggro deck um, in the Born of the, Born of the Gods release event draft that we did. Um, it was two Born of the Gods packs and one Theros pack, so... That will explain why some of these numbers are a little skewed in the Born of the Gods area. Um, so I'll just run through the list. It was one, a Crow and Crusader, four, Nyxborn Rolliker, one, Everflame Eidolon, one, Impetuous Sun Chaser, two, Satyr, Satyr, Rambler, Satyr, <laughs> <laughs> Satyr, Rambler, uh, one, Archetype of Aggression, one, Kragma Butcher, one Stormcaller of Car Karanos, two Two-Headed Cerberus, uh, one Borderland Minotaur, one Cyclops of One-Eyed Pass. Oh, wow. Look at all the numbers that are adding up. Two Two-Headed and at one, one Cyclops of One-Eyed Pass. <laughs> one Fair <laughs> Gary Gygax Giant, uh, Faragax Giant, one Stone Shot Giant. And then for my spells, I had one Dragon Mantle, one Titan Strength, two Lightning Strike, one Thunderous Might, one Bolt of Karanos, and one Fearsome Temper. And then my lands, I had one Temple of Enlightenment, one Island, and 13 Mountains. Um, I went 2 and one with this deck. My first round opponent was... Let me think. Oh, I wish I would have remembered this before we did the podcast. Usually no, that's okay. Um, just sort of, you, if you don't remember your matches specifically right now, just kind of go over, like, key plays oh, and stuff like that. My first round opponent was Black Red. Uh, they were Black Red Aggro. Oh. Um, and they were, I think, just deeper into Black, because I had obviously taken a lot of the Red. Yeah. You know? Um, but he had, like, a Minotaur strategy. He had Rage... Blood Shaman or whatever. The one rage, that makes it cheaper? Rage Monger, or? yeah. Rage Monger, right? That's what it is? We can verify that. Oh, well, there you go. I don't want to be giving false information to anybody. Uh, I or think it's you... Rage Monger. One word? Yeah. Well, oh, okay. Yeah, so we had this guy. Okay. And um, didn't really see a ton of other... Like, there were a couple Minotaurs he had, but clearly it wasn't like he had gotten a Minotaur strategy, you know? Mm -hmm. He was just pretty much mono black, but uh, he had tormented hero. He got it out every game we played, all three. Um, he got it out every game against me first turn, and that was pretty crazy. He had baleful idol on, 
He was just, uh, oh, he had that Asphodel, or no, it's Servant of Timurit. Oh, God, that guy's, the I, regen guy that, that guy's has really the good. inspired ability. Yep. And he had the, uh, he got this online and beat me with it. He had Servant of Timurit, and he had the Bestow guy, ah, the un, the Nyxborn, not Nyxborn. The plus two, plus one? The plus one, plus one with whenever it attacks or this enchanted creature attacks, defending player loses two life. Oh, yeah, that zombie guy. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, that one. Okay. On, I love that card, by the way. Guy, I, yeah. I think that... I really want that guy to be constructed playable. I think it's really. I'm trying to good. think if it, if there's any way to make that card constructed yeah. playable. I I can't remember the the name escapes me at the moment, but I think it's spiteful returned. I think is what it is. Um, the one with bestow, and then he also had a herald of torment, which is the three three flying. Um, nice. God, I'm good. He had yeah. herald of torment as well, which is the three three flying bestow. The rare? Uh, yeah, with lose a life during your upkeep. Um, anyway, he he did get he did have a pretty good black aggro strategy going on. I will say that. Um, I I can't remember exactly what I did to overcome him in the last game. It might have just been that he drew out lands and I drew enough aggro. Um, but the second game, I do remember him smashing my face with this attached to that servant of Timuret and then slapping the Herald of Torment on it later and just being like, well, there you go, there's yeah. the game, you know? So, Bestow is such a great ability, I love it, you know? And I had uh, three, or four Nyxborn Rollickers, but I did have a game where I put one out on turn one, enchanted it, that one with another one on turn two, and then played another one on turn three. So, you know, it's just like it, it can build up like that now with the cheaper ones. The shield mate is pretty cheap too for her heroic strategies. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really liking the way they're taking the stone now. Mm -hmm. The cards are a lot more relevant. I want to see this see play. Yeah. Anyway, I think this one could see play too because as a buff spell, it actually is really, really good for an aggro deck. Um, anyway, my second round opponent was against heroic. Blue white. Okay. And did he have he, the battle wise hot light? Yeah, stuff? he did. He had battle wise. He had hero of Iroas, and he got it out like. Is that the rare? Lot. Yeah, the rare with heroic put a counter on it, and aura spells are cheaper. Okay. He had that guy. He had cavalry Pegasus. He had lots of good heroic guys in white, and um, he just he overcame me. Overcame me, you know. Mm -hmm. I he played hero of Iroas and. He had one white open. I was not expecting this. I was maybe God's willing, but not this. I played Lightning Strike, targeting it at end of turn, and he played Mortal's Ardor on it. The plus one, plus one, and Life Link. Oh. One white instant. And it gave him the heroic plus one, plus one counter, and one, one, so it got him out of range of it mm. for just the turn. And that, that pretty much... Sealed the deal right there. He also played an Afar's Enlightenment on it, and I was like, "Well, the Baneslayer Angel is not <laughs> probably going to lose you this game, so I think I'll just go ahead and move on to game three. Yeah. Well, that that sucks. That'll yeah. happen though. Yeah. Sounds like he had a pretty strong deck. He did. He had a really good strategy in his deck. Like it was really well done. Um, then in round three, I played against Blue Green, and. His deck was pretty good, actually. He was blue-green, like, uh, kind of rampy, I think, was his, was his idea, like, to go big with his spells. He had a Kiora's follower, and um, he must have had something else that ramped, and I'm just, it's just escaping me at this moment, but... What was he untapping? Did he have inspired guys? He... I don't think he had inspired guys, or not like a ton of them, at least. Maybe he had one. He attacked me with, uh, this was the guy with Flood, or Master of Waves. He attacked me with the Floodwater Serpent. He had a Noble Seed and Kraken of the Straits. I know he had. What's what's the Floodwater Serpent? I think it's Floodwater Serpent. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Hmm. Well, what were the It's a 4-4 for 5, and it can't attack unless you bounce an enchantment. 
when it attacks. Oh, okay. I know what card you're talking about. Yeah. Does that does that play well for him? Maybe it's Flood Tide Serpent. Um, yeah, he when it worked, it worked well for him. He had Omen Speaker as well, so he actually could shut down my aggro pretty well early on with Omen Speaker and stuff. Um, and the Master of Waves obviously just helped, but he didn't have like a ton of blue devotion, you know, but the Master of Waves pro red, I was so red that it hurt. It was like, ugh, I, I don't even think I could have done anything out of the board with it. Either, yeah. Even if I were to side into a different color. Um, but I did manage to beat him. I think it was Impetuous Sun. I just kept attacking in. I I was like, I just gotta keep going at it and like eventually I'll I'll kill him, you know. He was at four life. I had an impetuous sun chaser out, and it was like my last creature. And I had a dragon, dragon's mantle in my hand, and was one mana short of playing it and pumping it to four. I had three mana out, I should say. Mm -hmm. Top deck the mountain and slammed the dragon mantle on it <laughs> and swung in for four. Nice. Yeah, I was like, yay, I did That's it. That's huge. Yeah, because. It was like a struggle. He was starting to like regain his momentum or whatever, you know. This guy may actually be more playable in this limited environment because of all the bestow and yeah. good auras. Definitely. So something to keep in mind because it mm -hmm. definitely looks a little bit underwhelming on the surface. Yeah, and you the thing about it is you can play it post combat to avoid having to attack with it the first turn you play it too. So if it's like a matter of mana conservation or something. Yeah, and then you could actually chump with it. Yeah, too. and I chumped with it today. Okay, that that's way. convenient. Yeah. So, you know, there are options, a, a little bit of options. Yeah, not with a lot. It. Yeah. He could have also just waited and had you attack in with it. But yeah. Does the same thing, I guess. Mm. Um. Okay. So. Anyway, um, I went two and one. I also had the Temple of Enlightenment. Was really happy whenever I drew it. Yeah, actually. Uh, any of the Scry. I think I only had Titan Strength and Bolt of Karanos. So what made you opt for Mono Red? Uh, eventually I was just... I don't know. Nobody was taking it at first. And I was like, well, this is one of those colors where if you get into it early, it is actually really cool because you can get a lot of good spells and stuff from it, you know? Mono red, or not mono red, but red offers a lot of the direct damage, so creature removal typically. And then it can give you some pretty aggressive creatures as well. And limited is totally one of those formats where you want to go a little more aggressive, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I did pick up some white cards. I had a couple loyal Pegasus, uh, Pegasi, uh, Immortals, Ardor, um, uh, Couple of Revoke Existence and Ghost Blade I want. So I had a few other cards that were playable in white as well. Which um, one's Ghost Blade I want? It's the Double Strike guy. Oh, okay. You had him? Yeah. That's cool. And he's actually very splashable too. And off the Enlighten, or Temple of Enlightenment, I could have just played white instead of uh, blue. For my little splash there, um, I was only doing it for the Stormcaller of Karanos. It has the ability to pay one and uh, our blue and one colorless to scry one, um, and otherwise it's a three mana two two haste. But I never got the chance to use it, unfortunately. Um, but it seemed like a good idea at the time, I guess. Otherwise, I had fun with it. You know, I didn't really stress about it. I was just kind of enjoying it. How early were, or how late were you picking up Nick's Born Relicers? Were they coming super late? Um, or did you feel like you were going after them relatively I was early? trying to go after them early because I was like, these are such a good bestow card. These are just great for bestow, you know? And I don't care if it's white, red, or green, red. I knew I wanted to be red. But it's a two mana. I'll just trigger my bestow. And, you know. Or trigger your heroic and get or your... The, yeah, trigger my bestow. But trigger your... saying bestow the whole time. Trigger my heroic. And get your yeah, bestow. And yeah, get my bestow. For two mana. That's true. And get another creature later. So it is a lot of... Uh, yeah, for this limited environment especially, I think that's a really good ability. Mm -hmm. So maybe those guys could be picked pretty high. 
And I think you were saying like you'd play one and then on turn one bestow on it the next couple turns. Yeah, I had a three three Nixborn Reliker one game, so and then it breaks apart into two one ones when they kill it or if they bounce it or whatever they do with it, you know. Um so I really like it. I really like that card in particular, and it's good on two headed Cerberus in this deck and good on Impetuous Sun Chaser. Even Seder Rambler gets better with uh, that on it. Everplay Mylon is obviously very good. I think everyone knows it. Um, putting that on two-headed Cerberus and having Archetype of Aggression out, I had that out one game. That was pretty good. Yeah, I love the Everplay Mylon. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to playing that in, in Limited as well. I'm actually a little bit... I was intrigued by it constructed, you know, if it was applicable to that or not. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I was saying probably not, but I like the idea of giving a guy, you know, pseudo sort of wrath protection. Like, mm -hmm. you still get to punish him hard the turn after they wrath. But I think ultimately it's just not quite good enough. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's a cool card. It is a really cool card. And I think it's, it's great, very, yeah, great for yeah. limited. I really yeah, think very it good. lets you trade twice, I mm -hmm. think, most of the time in limited. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's really going to shine. And uh, do you think any of these archetype cards are going to make their way into Constructed? Uh, maybe the Courage, the First Strike guy. Um, How much is... What, it's uh, only three mana. And it's well, I guess two. we can just type in archetype. We can see them all. Mm -hmm. But the red one is the three mana, three, two, trample. Archetype is the three mana two two oh. first strike or uh, courage is two two first strike. Endurance is six five hex proof. Finality is six mana two three death touch, and imagination is six mana three two flying. Yeah, that's a game under in limited. By the I way. bet. I think archetype imagination is very good for I think limited. It's the strongest limited one. Probably. I think they're all pretty damn playable in limited. Yeah. It doesn't look like any of them are quite good enough courage for Courage is really good for limited. I guess you're right. There is a chance archetype of Courage is good enough for constructed, maybe out of sideboard. But maybe it's a sideboard card because against an aggressive deck against another aggressive deck or something. Um, well, I mean, now that you're you're done talking about your deck, since I don't have a deck to talk about, I thought maybe we should talk about what kind of decks we're presumably going to be seeing maybe popping up in, in construct standard, you know, standard mm -hmm. constructor over the next couple months. So I think we're both pretty sure there's going to be, a, there already was a mono white aggro deck. Now we've got the addition of what's the new one drop, the Pegasus. Loyal Pegasus. I think. They've got Loyal Pegasus now. There's a one, so they have another one mana attacker, one mana two one flyer, but it can't attack or block alone. Which is important. So it's not necessary. It's not good on turn one unless you've got yeah. some haste to back it up. Are there any two drop haste guys that are in, in white? Red? Well, not in white. Obviously. In red, you can still do the loyal legion. Yeah. Whatever his name legion is. Legion loyalist. Legion loyalist. Yeah. And yeah. An ash zealot off of, only off a of sacred foundry though, so that's pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Shred freak, same sort of deal. Yeah, that's not. Really good enough. You really want a one drop or like one red colorless guy. Yeah, so pretty much just the Legion Loyalist would be the one that's realistic alongside it. But maybe this one won't see play. I mean, you have the Vyashno Fangtail and the Sky Knight Legionnaire as well, mm -hmm. and uh, Minotaur Skull Cleaver. So there, there are actually quite a few hasty, hasty dudes. Yeah. But um, potentially Loyal Pegasus. Maybe this card's sturdier than I'm giving it. Maybe I'm giving it too much credit. I like it. I just think the mono white deck, because we talked about there's also Soldier of the Pantheon. I mean, they have Soldier of the Pantheon. They have the Dryad Militant. And I feel like there's even another one drop that I'm not In thinking mono of. mono-white? Yes, already. Uh, Soldier, Dryad Militant. Um, God, I'm playing this deck. What I don't know why we always forget. Well, Hopeful. there's also there's Hopeful Ho Eidolon. Hopeful Eidolon. Really like, that's actually, not the but... one I'm thinking of. There's an actual another... Two power, two power guy. I know there is too. Can't think of his name though. 
Um, but yeah, so there's going to be 16 one drops for that deck. Mm -hmm. And their two drops are great too, because they have the Imposing Sovereign, they have the Precinct Captain, mm -hmm. they have Brave the Elements currently. Yeah. The, the red one, the red version of it was running the Boros Charm as well. So their spell suit was just Brave Boros Charm. So it's like protection from wrath effects, get by your guys, or protection from spot removal. Mm hmm. I really like that deck a lot. God, I'm still trying to think of what the third one is. I think this deck did get weaker, though, because there's the mono black yeah. infest now, and neither the Boros Charm or the Brave protects them from that. Mm -hmm. um, there's also, like you said, what's the new sort of minus three, minus three to all the same? Bio Blight. There's also Bio Blight now, which is a new thing, a new tool mono black's going to have. The two man, two black instant target creature and all other creatures with the same name as that creature get minus three minus three until end of turn. Cool art. We're gonna see this popping up. I'm sure of it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna see the new infest, which is called Drown in Sorrow. Drown in Sorrow, which is just strictly better than infest. Mm -hmm. They just decided to give it infest an upgrade. So that's that's, that was a cool... I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. I just don't like seeing it now, necessarily, I think. Like, I'm really cool with this card. I just... I'm not... It's not a card I want to see right now. Yeah. Because it's going to hurt my strategy a lot. Yeah. So, I don't know. I was already thinking about shifting gears. It seems more realistic now. But, um, yeah, I think we pretty much covered the mono-white archetype. I mean, we can talk about what the red-green monsters deck is going to turn into. You know? Yeah, there's a lot of cool cards. Well, at least two that have come out for Cause it. Because we're going to see Xenagos now. Mm -hmm. This is already it was pre-selling and heavily hyped. So, the five... Oh, well, Fnatic, too, is a good Fnatic, yeah. Three, well, Fnatic's going to... Uh, of Xenagos, three mana, three, three, trample, tribute one. And if the tribute's not paid, it gets plus one, plus one, and gains haste until end of turn. So... It's, definitely going to yeah. see play. I don't know why the monsters list wouldn't run it. Maybe they, maybe they don't. I... There's I mean, it is on it is on three, but you can play it off of a turn one Elvish Mystic. There may be enough fatties where they're okay with taking it one turn back, just mm -hmm. for more threatened power. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to. I I thought for sure this guy was good enough. I thought so too, but we'll see. Xenagos God of Rebels. Uh, so yeah, he makes you know he's got the. At the beginning of your combat, of combat on your turn, another target creature control gains haste and gets plus X, plus X. So this is just sick with everything. Gore Clan, Rampager, and Polycranos. Mm -hmm. And um, a scavenging is, can you imagine on that? He's like a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. Just gets huge. <laughs> Xenagos is so cool. So, I really like this card a lot. This guy's, like. this guy's a big deal. Yeah. This guy's a really big deal. And uh, the only thing I can see him screwing with is if they have a low enough creature count, because then he's pretty use useless, you know? Mm -hmm. He really requires, like Domri, to have a creature-heavy deck, mm -hmm. but it's hard to get your distributions right when you have to run cards like Xenagos. But I guess he actually is a creature, mm -hmm. so you can technically draw him off of Domri. Yeah. So for that reason, and I guess too. they yeah. work pretty well for that. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, how many Domries do you play, I guess? And how many Xenagos do you play? Yeah. How deep do you go? I guess on Xenagos, I probably wouldn't go more than two of. And they're probably going to be doing three, I bet. You know? Mm hmm But maybe you're right. Maybe two is more reasonable. I feel like three... I. He's still hard to remove, you know? Yeah. And I love that he... I mean, Gorklan Rampager is so sick with him. Yeah. Polycranos is so good with him. Mm-hmm. I really like the idea of post combat with Polycranos too. Mm -hmm. Then you get to fight maybe a couple dudes, you know. Yeah, after he's already a ten ten, then use it. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So maybe he survives mm -hmm. something he couldn't ordinarily. So I definitely think red green monsters is going to be a thing for a while. Anything happened for blue for mono blue devotion? I mean, are there blue cards from Born of the Gods that we thought were? Anything? I don't Not really. I don't remember being blown away by anything in blue, but I don't mind. I mean, maybe nullify, maybe. 
if in like if it ores or something like the stove. Yeah, I guess you're right. We could see nullify. But that's still a sideboard card at best. Mm hmm. Two mana, instant, counter target, creature, aura. So, yeah, we just talked about bestow. Is there anything for maybe black, red aggro or. That out of form? We talked about the two drop new zombie. Yeah. And they already have. I was thinking something like you already have Cackler mm -hmm. and you've got Tormented Hero. Mm hmm. And Fire Drink Crusader. If you wanted to go to black, red. So then oh, got, okay. So you're thinking mono black? If you yeah. want to do black red though, you still have like Spike Jester and stuff too. Mm -hmm. And I guess I feel technically like, Mogus out of sideboard maybe for control. I feel like there is a there is an event that we aren't seeing uh, where where we're looking, where we are looking for it on the internet because I feel like they were talking today about a mono black list that was a mono black aggro list. Yeah, um, we were looking for lists earlier, but seer and there's nothing on Star City currently. Yeah. They've still got old stuff. We were watching some legacy event earlier on on that, but that was all we could find. So we don't have any information on the new decks. We're just still pure speculation yeah. mode. Yeah. Because I'm assuming we're still going to see mono black and mono blue. Mm -hmm. They're not going anywhere, you know. Yeah. There's still an archetype that they people have piloted for a while and they know how it works. Mm -hmm. But uh, what are the new archetypes we're gonna we're gonna see? I I told you Star City had something up for like a second that was Brad Nelson burn deck. Mm -hmm. And it was running the new, um, what's that Seder's name? Fire Dancer? Uh, yeah, Fire Dancer. The new Fire Dancer, Seder Fire Dancer, 2 mana, 1-1. One, one. Whenever an incinter sorcery spell you control deals damage to an opponent, it, uh, Fire Dancer deals that much damage to our creature that a player controls. And we had talked about how we were pretty unhappy with this card, mm -hmm. but he was running it as a 4 of main deck with like 4 Boros Charm, 4 Magma Jet, 4 Searing Blood, Four War Leaders Helix or three it's War Leaders Helix. It's actually pretty cool with Searing Blood. I will say that. It's cool. Kill the creature, deal three to them, kill a creature maybe. I could see that paying off. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I mean, four of main deck. That's highly anticipating fighting. Other so, creatures? Yeah. And then you have to have stuff that kills, like, deals five damage to their face. I guess, no, you don't. Because while, like, Polychronos, that's what I'm thinking, you know, is... If they have a Polychrono so Do you lightning strike them and then shock them? Yeah, so you're still working them down while killing their creatures. Yeah, so, so okay. it's, it is cool for that. Yeah, I mean, it's still not... It's not the best thing in the world, in my opinion, but I like what it does, I guess, in that way. You can act more defensively in your burn deck as far as actually clearing the board and keeping it, you know away are their threats off of it. Yeah, it's while great. While still advancing your position. Great in creature matches. Mm -hmm. And then it's just terrible in control matches. Yeah. And it's terrible in... I would think... I mean, it's actually fine, I guess, against aggro creature decks and mid-range creature decks. Mm -hmm. It's just bad against control or something similar to control. Or something that just maybe has a ton of spot removal. Maybe mm -hmm. it's not that great either. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he was making it work. Four Boros Charm, bunch of War Leaders Helix. I like Boros Charm with it, yeah. though. I think that's Kill a actually smiter. pretty cool. Yeah. So, that's cool. I would have loved to have seen that play, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, are we going to see any more archetypes? What color are we not covering here? Did Mono Green maybe get any better? It, I mean... We, we're seeing Corsair of Crufex now. Mm -hmm. That's most likely yeah, going to be... Actually, I was the, thinking, yeah, the, mono, or the Monsters deck. Yeah, that's definitely going to be in the Monsters mm -hmm. deck. So we're going to see that getting to the point where they can get a Xenagos online. Are there four drops? Um, I think that's going to be a nice heavy hitter in Standard for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm not excited about fighting that card. I really yeah. think if that card is... Four toughnesses. If that card is as popular as I think it will be for the green, any green anything decks, I think we're going to see a lot more mortars popping up. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, That's I can see that for sure. It's sort of necessary. Um, Alright. Well, why don't we just go to uh, Weird Harvest this week. Sorry, I don't have the bumper ready. We're going to have to skip the Weird Harvest bumper. That's sad.
I guess I don't have to skip it. I can. Favorite part of the week, yeah. Favorite part of the week is Jake Kieran. <laughs> I know it's a bold statement, but you gotta believe me that nothing exciting happens in my life. If I can even get it to play. It's okay. It's worth waiting for. I think everybody can agree. Maybe. Jeez. Well, anyway, while it's loading, uh, we've got Evan Prator this week from Fallen Empires. Yeah. I feel like my computer's going to blue screen soon. Yeah. Um, so, Evan Prator, six mana, five, five, trample, first striker. During your upkeep, put a minus two, minus two counter on Evan Prator. And you may sack a creature during your upkeep to remove a minus two, minus two counter from Evan Prator. If the, sac if the creature sacrifice was a throw, also put a plus one, plus zero counter on Ebon Praetor. Only one creature may be sacrificed in this manner each turn. So, already we see an immediate issue with this card. It puts minus two, minus two counters and plus one, plus zero counters on it. So, the ultimate the, shame. All right. So, and I should even get more specific about this. Here it comes. <laughs> Jesus, not even worth it. Weird. Weird. You are this. You are this. You are this. Totally worth it. It's like two years later. That's it crazy. Totally worth it. This computer is gonna freeze. Two thousand and eight. I'm just hoping we get through the podcast so we don't lose it. Yeah. Um. So during your upkeep, put a minus two, minus two counter on them. Yeah, and then plus one, plus zero counter. So anyway, I was saying old rules are, well, the new rules are if you get a minus one, minus one counter on something, and then it gets a plus one, plus one counter, you just remove all the counters. But this, the old rules were you had to have multiple different counters on a creature. So and you had to remember, mm -hmm. which is terrible. It's absolutely terrible. And so they they did away with it. It was so yeah. bad. They have minus two, minus two counters also, which they wouldn't do anymore. So already, just the fact that the design of the card is so messed up makes it hilarious for this section. But Jake, why don't you explain what the picture is exactly? <laughs> Can you explain what the picture is exactly? I don't even know. Um, I'm going to go with this is some sort of hellscape in the background. And the pri the Praetor is the the demon with the uh, like goat face. The goat like skull face. Anyway, um, there. this is like a different artwork, by the way, from what is... There's like two different arts for this, I think. Um, the original, I think, there's a woman there instead of the merfolk, but they put the merfolk there in this art. Um, and that's why you have the demon, or the imp, or whatever, on the right that doesn't fit in with the Fallen Empire set theme, you know, and the large giant rabbit, or whatever you want to call it, I don't know. And, the Easter bunny on and, the left? Yeah, and what is the rabbit exactly? I'm going to go with they're all thralls because that's the only way you can explain their shape and size and stature. I can't, I don't even know what to call it. But it's there, a it, rabbit. It's funny just so much that the rabbit doesn't fit in at all. It's, it doesn't even make sense in magic lore. Like, it doesn't even make sense no matter where you put it. It's a literally just rabbit. a giant. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's either a giant rabbit or these things are on such a small scale. You know what I mean? Like, Super unique. We've never been exposed to a giant rabbit, but we're exposed to a five-five trample first strike praetor, and there is a giant rabbit rabbit in its employ. Apparently, mm -hmm. so I don't know. The praetor is menacing looking, but could have been better for a five-five first strike trample. He doesn't look like he'll do either of those things. We were saying, I mean, trample first strike is a sweet mashup. Super mm -hmm. rare too. Mm -hmm. They don't do it very often. It's only a few cards, and it seems like they're mostly old cards, too, which is kind of funny. But You can grow its power, too, which actually makes it a little better. Mm -hmm. I This card is so confusing, though, because of the multiple different mm -hmm. counters. But I actually think this card's... <coughs> excuse me. Decent. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that bad. Um, you know? Mm -hmm. Because I bet you were playing a lot of thrills alongside it. Presumably, is it supposed to be like a marriage, or is it supposed to be these two demons are like forcing? They're the sacrificing to... the merfolk 
to the demon, or to the praetor. And the big bunny's just helping, and the demon is, well, well, this is a Apparently perfect... Apparently seduced the rabbit into this dark task. <laughs> Happy to have this card be a part of our weird harvest. Yeah, this one really deserved it, actually. Oh, God, long time coming, but, mm -hmm. all right, I better call it quits before my computer implodes on itself. Yeah. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully we're going to have some better content for you next week. Uh, sorry if we didn't have enough information. At least Jake had the, the good draft deck to talk about. But um, we just, you know, we're all anxious for Born of the Gods mm -hmm. to come out. So we're just going to wait. I'm going to have some videos up as soon as possible. All right. See you guys later. Later.